We're going to take uh, another quick look at type aliases now in a little bit more depth, but not uh, not too much. Uh, this won't be there won't be too much new here, but just uh, just to remind you uh, what uh, <clears throat> what they are about. Uh, you know, a type alias is uh, declared with the uh, with the word type, and this uh, this creates something called my type that is absolutely one hundred percent the same as a string. And uh, if you do like. Uh, you know, my string, you know, something, something equals, you know, the um, something with the same value and that one is a my type and the other is a string, then uh, Rust will say that they're equal. Whereas if you want to make a, uh, a new type, you would say like a new type and then you, um, you make that a tuple struct and then this is uh, an actual new type and the, uh, the string is inside and you can do things like, uh, like derive uh, you can like uh, give it debug and so on, just like a uh, just like a another type. So there's that, and uh, the reason why you would want to uh, why you usually use uh, these uh, type aliases is when you have uh, long names. And I have a, a quick example here. So you imagine that you have this. Um, so let's say we don't know what the return type of this yet is yet and we have this um, function that's returning something it takes a uh, reference uh, to a vec of chars and uh, then it does this iter skip take five and returns that and you can you can ask rust you know what what's the type and, and you know we want to put it there so we can uh, tell it the return type and it is this massive this thing right here and actually um, even if this actually will not be uh whoops i hit run again this will actually um this is not even the full type i'll just show you how that works so uh so you know the the compiler says okay this is the type but when you do that it says oh what's skip and uh skip is actually a uh, standard iter iter skip so it's actually even a little bit longer than we thought and this is you know a massive uh, crazy looking type so what we can do is uh, use a type alias here and we can say type skip four uh, take five and this is a uh, we've got a lifetime here so we'll we'll put that in there and let's give that a lifetime and then um, then we can change this to skip for take five and then rust will be happy with that and then the the person reading your code will probably be be happier with that and of course you can always just um, you can do um, you don't have to use a, uh, a type alias if you uh, if you prefer to actually see the uh, the code so you can do uh, you can do something like this take and skip you know they are inside uh, standard iter there are uh, these methods for for iterators so we'll we'll bring them in so that lets us take turn this into this and then uh, skip becomes uh, that just becomes a skip and then iter is uh, it's over here standard slice iter that's where you find that and then we can turn that into a somewhat more readable um, actually not here turn this so we don't need to declare a type alias and we delete that and then we have a somewhat better uh, return value. And of course, we can also say, you know, type, uh, read, so let's see, skip four, return five equals this thing here. And, you know, then now uh, we can see that we have, uh, we've imported this. This is pretty readable, but then maybe we want to uh, change it into a type alias as well. So skip four, return five. <clears throat> So it's 100% uh, up to you. And uh, let's see, consider introducing a lifetime, of course. I have the lifetime in here, by the way, just to make it look really, really complex. So that is um, that is type aliases again. And uh, one uh, one other thing I want to uh, to show you is the as keyword. So we've used uh, we've used as for cast. So you have like a you know, as a eight, as u eight, as i eight, that sort of thing. You can also um, you can also you change your change the names of uh, of types in Rust if you want to uh, 
because you might have a duplicate name. You might have, um, you know, my string. You know, you declared your own uh, struct my string, and then, uh, <clears throat> you know, let's say somebody else uh, has some code, and you're you're bringing in this code, and inside there is uh, my string as well. So you can say, um, you know, use uh, whatever their 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 uh, crate name is. A uh, by the way, a crate is like a uh, it's like a big uh, collection of um, create this like code written by somebody else. That's not exactly what a crate is, but for now. So imagine you're using this crate written by somebody else, and it's called uh, I don't know uh, my crate, I don't know, my crate, and then there's something called my string. And you can say as uh, as other person string, like that. So that is um, one other way that you use that. And uh, I have a, a small example here where you have this this. Uh, let's say that we brought in this. Uh, we have this big enum from uh, from somebody else's code, and it's got these. Uh, you know, we want to match against this, and this is uh, this is pretty long. So uh, what we can do, and also you can see there's no um, there's no way to you know import the you know you, you know you usually say use file state uh, and then star, but that is um, that's still not going to help us. We'll, we'll still have you know cannot access file file open and ready, so it's still pretty big. So what we can do is uh, is this. Let's imagine we have a uh, function called give file state. And we're going to uh, we're going to take a look at the file state, and when then we are going to uh, match the input. So uh, it's going to be file state cannot access file. And we say print in print line. I mean, and can't access file. So this is you know super long, and we've got four left. So um, you can uh, you can do this you know inside the function you can do it uh, over here, but uh, let's just do it inside the function right now. So use file state, and then we're going to do this. So cannot access file is let's call it no access, and then the next one is called file opened and ready as uh, let's call this good, and no such file exists. We're going to call this no file. And then the last one is super long, similar file name in next directory as <clears throat> uh, other directory. And then we, uh, we do that. And so you can see we've, uh, we've done this big, uh, this big import of everything inside file file state, but we're not just doing a star. We're saying, okay, we want to give it all our own names because uh, this is just uh, this is ridiculous here. And then we can uh, match the input and say, no access is this. And uh, you know, I don't I don't feel like typing out the rest, so let's just copy it in. So then we have uh, no access. We have good, no file, other directory, and then uh, then everything should uh, should work fine. And there we go. And we're not actually going to do anything with this. This is just to show that you can, uh, you know, um, create your own names and uh, make things a little bit easier for you. And that's what uh, type aliases and the uh, and the as keyword can be uh, can be used for.